Hi everyone, um, this is uh, a demonstration of Soundscape. Soundscape is um, it's a system, it's it's a plugin that is designed f to help populate your worlds with ambient sounds. Um, it's a system that I designed for the early access demo and it's something that actually I designed actually the first version of it was for last year's UE5 demo um, a lot of the ambient sound in that demo was done with this with soundscape and then I refactored it for the early access demo and basically it's just a tool that that, that I use for myself um, at work and I just I just carry it from project to project and I you know, I've already ported over the next thing I'm going to be working on, um, and I'm probably going to make changes to it again. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of like, for me, it's like a living product, um, and I keep refining it and, and improving on it. Um, and what's cool is that because the Valley of the Ancient was released for everyone to mess around with, several of my systems are were included so um, <clears throat> and obviously the value of the ancient has a ton of sounds in it so um, you know there's lots for people to play with but I thought it would be fun to kind of show how this system works um, at least for the time being <laughs> uh, and uh, and sort of my philosophy for ambient sound design. So let me let me zoom out here. Um, and let me go. Boop. There we are. Okay. So oh, that's interesting that it uh, that my world something happened with my active sound list when I popped out when I popped out. Anyway, um, <laughs> so oh, let me, uh, this is my layout. <laughs> this is how I, I usually work with these two content browsers. All right, so uh, so like I said, it's a plugin. It's, a, it's at the project level, um, just called Soundscape. And actually, you can actually go into the Valley of the Ancient and just pluck it out and use it in your own project. It's pretty easy to port. You just copy the directory, the, the Soundscape directory, in the uh, Valley of the Ancients uh, plugin hierarchy. Uh, but this is what it is, and it, and it requires gameplay tags. Um, it's a state-driven system right now. So... Um, so the way that it works is, well, let me talk about my philosophy real quick. So my philosophy with ambient sound design usually has two layers to it. I ha I usually have like what I consider the sort of matte painting layer. And the matte painting layer is usually done with like non-spatialized loops. And to me, these are usually subtle elements or, or just con obviously continuous elements um, like uh, like a painter would paint you know like think Bob Ross like painting the mountains in the background first you know that's to me that's like that's the like the distant background and then you have the sort of mid ground and to me the mid ground is populated with 3D assets, 3D sounds. And the reason is because I want, I want a sense of depth as the player moves through the space or the camera rotates around. And with camera rotation, you can use ambisonics for the background if you want to sort of help that, give that a sense of sort of uh, a sense that it sort of envelops the player, but 
Um, and you can, but you can also use them for mid-ground elements. So ambisonics is powerful. But um, but I like the idea of like, you know, when you get, because that's sort of how it is when you're when you're experiencing like ambient sound, like uh, like a, like crickets, you know. At some point, you're walking along, and you can actually hear an individual cricket pop out from the f sort of distant din of crickets. And it's because you've just moved close enough to that cricket, you know? Um, and so that's sort of the idea behind that, uh, behind this sort of background mid-ground. And these aren't necessarily sp spot elements. They're not like related to geometry or any gameplay actor or anything like that. To me, that's like foreground um, or like interactive or something. So that's, that's more specific. That's not what this is trying to solve. This is trying to solve the problem where like you have a forest that's just huge and you just need to fill it with sound all the time. And you need to be able to drive the sound by state information you know like that that's that's all <laughs> you know so for example uh, uh, uh different times a day or different sub regions of an area you know might ha might have changes in the state that's that sort of thing so i use gameplay tags and this demonstration is very simple. Um, I just created a gameplay tag data table, boop, that has two tags, soundscape forest main and soundscape mountain valley. And um, I just updated my uh, gameplay tags to include that table. And then, then they're there. Now, the way that I've sort of set up the assets um, I basically have right now I have two assets a soundscape color and a soundscape palette and the soundscape color is like an individual sound and the and the soundscape color basically is where you define the, pl the like the behavior the spawning behavior of the sound in the world and the palette is just a collection of colors. That's basically it. So for example, you can see my two palettes here, forest soundscape and the mountain valley soundscape. But then here are all my colors. I have a bee color, I have a cicada color, I have a cricket color, I have a forest bird color. I have forest crickets color, I have a mountain air color, a squirrel color, a wind gusts color, a wren color. There's a theme, can you tell? It's like soundscape, landscape, <laughs> painting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, if we look at a simple one, the uh, forest crickets, this is actually just a loop that plays and if we take a look at the color you'll see most of these elements are do nothing they're like all grayed out they're not activated these behaviors we play this loop it has no volume modulation no pitch modulation um, and the uh, there's no special playback behavior modulation behavior or spawning behavior it just essentially, and this is the default values, just plays once and that's it, right when it's right from the beginning. Um, and on the other hand, we can look at an individual cricket. And so this is an individual cricket. And it uh, has some randomized volume. And then we have things like delaying the first spawn so like how long does it take for the first cricket to spawn and how long between spawns does do we uh wait before spawning again 
And is there a cap on how many we can have at once? Um, and then, you know, how far away from the listener should it spawn? And what sort of angle, azimuthal angle, should it spawn, spawn at? And then are there any sort of altitude clamping or restrictions? Um, and then we can also rotate sound sources, you know. Rotation is not, is most sound sources probably won't use rotation, but it's really powerful with ambisonic sound sources. So, um, so yeah, then like for, you know, for, uh, let's see. Oh, here's, yeah, so here's the, uh, so that, that was a color. This is a palette, right? And so for the forest soundscape palette, I include crickets and the forest birds and the cricket, individual crickets. You can see the forest crickets have reduced volume. This is the loop, remember? And then we have bees, which are at 50% volume, and squirrels, which are 50% volume, and then a wren, which is actually at 50% pitch. And that's because this color was actually meant for the mountain valley but I wanted to reuse it and I pitch it down and it makes it sounds more exotic. So, um, so yeah, and then you can see there is actually a fade, fade in, fade out behavior. So when, so, oh, at the top, you can see the conditions for which it would play. So what happens is the way that the sub, the, the system works, Um, is at the very beginning of your game or, or module or level or whatever, um, you can, it's modular in the sense that you can load palettes, what I call palette collections, which are just set a set of palettes. Um, you can load palettes dynamically and you can unload palettes dynamically all right and this all works with the soundscape subsystem so you can load you can add palette collections and you can remove palette collections and this is just part of the loading behavior for the subsystem and then the you can set state on the subsystem and the subsystem will store the collection of palettes and all of the collections that you add to the subsystem throughout the game and if you remove collections, then it will remove those collections um, from the, sus the subsystem. You can set state, which is just adding these uh, gameplay tags to the state. Um, and there's some very l light uh, state uh, behavior because of the way gameplay ta gameplay tags work you get added to um it will like look and see if it's already been added and, and uh it will uh i think it will kick out its siblings sibling tags um but um what's cool is the state you can set states oh and you can clear states Right, so if you just want to remove a tag. What's cool is if you have, if you can set a state, and when you add a palette collection, if any of the collect, any of the palettes in your collection uh, pass the conditions because of the currently set states, those will become active. Um, if you remove palette, palettes from the subsystem, while they're playing, then that'll just deactivate first, and then they'll be they'll be unloaded. Um, this this is sync loading behavior, so you only want to do this like on begin play, or like when it's obviously an important loading time or something like that. So it's something where it's okay to have kind of a potentially big load, but um, I, I want to like be able to update this. Uh, to maybe do async loading, but I didn't have time on this project. Um, so that's, yeah, so that's it. And so here I just have some trigger volumes 
when I move between them and it just sets the state, removes the state. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I use a simple query uh, because they're, they're easy to use and they're, a lot of people know about them. And this is just like, hey, is there a Soundscape Forest main gameplay tag on the subsystem? And if it passes, if all these tags match, then this palette will become active. And so that's actually the cool part about this system is that you can make them, you can separate your palettes and be, to be more modular. So on Valley of the Ancient, I actually had like a, like a base desert, and base dark world palettes. And then I had additional palettes for like exploration or for uh, like fl flying in the hub, in the dr drone when you're flying through the desert or like exploring through the dark world or or like when you're in battling the, the ancient um the ancient one or whatever so you they can you can think of them as additive which is cool um and palettes are singular so if i have um if multiple collections load the forest soundscape palette then if it passes it'll only one instance of the palette will actually play and if you remove it from if you remove one of them from the collection um, it will still persist because there's another one still in there so it it that works colors are not singular <clears throat> so if a color is shared between multiple palettes and they all become active, then there'll be many of the same color active. Um, so that's something to be aware of. But otherwise, the concept here is to is to allow the the designer to cr to dictate the behaviors of sounds playing, and then just have the implementation actually in in the in the game be very simple. Um, and I, I didn't like, like I said before, this is really for, you know, filling a space with sound and making it feel like it's alive with the shortest amount of work possible. <clears throat> um, and then the other cool thing is that it's, uh, it's, uh, live updatable. Well, the, the colors you can update live the palettes you can't i want to make i have it on my list to make the palettes updatable during gameplay but um or at least during editor time so during editor time you can update the colors which is cool because then you can listen to it and you can be like oh i want like a whole lot more bees so let's have like tons of more bees so we'll increase the like you know we'll make 10 bees and then they'll spawn every second or something ridiculous like that and they'll always be really let's you know we can make them close make them closer to the the uh, listener so it's just like bees all over the place <laughs> um i like we can make them even closer to us i think we can i think we've got a clamp on the bottom we have to resolve because I'm clamping its, their height to, like, ground height. But yeah, so... Oh, and then we could give more pitch modulation. Let's go, like... And then maybe a little ridiculous you know but it's it's just as an example let's let's bring it back to just one at a time and then let's make them farther away from the player i find the bees really annoying like most people <laughs> um so yeah so that's soundscape this is uh you know this is uh 
some work I did. You actually get to see it. It's kind of cool for me. There's a lot of times that I do work on special projects and the, the work that I do doesn't really go out to the public, you know, or isn't something that I can kind of explain or show. So I'm kind of excited. I might show, I might do this for some of the other plugins that, that I did that released along with it as well. But, but for now, um, yeah, that soundscape. Thanks for listening. Thanks for checking it out. Appreciate it.